you're it's me again and once again i lied i said i was gonna have a video every week but obviously that didn't happen but at least it's not like nine months in between like it was between my first video and the last one the last video being this one right here which you could watch if you just click in a corner if you haven't seen it but anyway last week was not only my birthday i officially became a senior citizen but it was also my grandma's funeral on the same day and just a whole bunch of other stuff happening so forgive me for this week this particular video is about several photography trips i've taken to big sur and my toxic relationship that i have with it and if anyone knows anything about photography trips and toxic relationships it's me so i just feel qualified to talk about these two things it's kind of like my place that I go to like when I'm just feeling down or whatever. I'm a cancer. Just keep that in mind. It's like one of my favorite places ever. If you go there, you'll probably be amazed at like everything you see there. And I hope this video inspires you to go there and take photographs. But I just feel like in all the times that I've been there, I've never taken like photos that I was happy enough with that really showcase how beautiful Big Sur is and that's why i call it a toxic relationship and also because of the fact that the first time i ever went there was because of a bad breakup that i had or whatever and i was just like this is trash frank ocean blonde just came out so i was like i'm gonna hop in my car play blonde on repeat for like 23 hours and just uh you know take photographs and all that so i did that So this was the first trip that I've ever taken to Big Sur. It was back in September 2016. I was heading up to link with my homie Jordan Marcel. Dope artist, dope producer. We were working on an album together. As you can see, it was foggy as shit. But I kind of like those conditions. I really like moody scenes and moody photographs. So this kind of worked for me. It was my first time using the Sony a7 II. I had bought it just for this trip, but I didn't really like it. So I ended up going back to a Canon 60 after that, and then ended up going back to Sony right after that, long story. I'll get into it in some other video. So these were the photographs taken on that trip. March 2018. So this was my second trip to Big Sur. I was actually living in New York again for a short time, but I needed a trip, so I hopped on a plane, headed to San Francisco, and this time I drove south down the coast because I realized the first time I was in Big Sur, it's a lot easier if you drive south, if you drive north to south, because all of the stops and whatnot that you'll be making will be on the right side, so you don't have to like cross traffic to stop. It's just overall a much better way to experience Big Sur, in my opinion. And this was actually my first time taking the A7R3 on a trip. I think I got it in between the last vid the last portion of the video you saw and this one. So I really love the A7R3. It's the camera I told you on my last video got stolen and I've been rocking with it for a long time. It's one of my favorite cameras I've ever used. Bixby Creek Bridge. I believe it's called Bixby Creek Bridge or just Bixby Bridge. This right here, this was probably my favorite Big Sur trip just because of how peaceful it is. I had this dope sunset. In retrospect, I don't really like the way I edited the photographs. This was at a time when I think I was maybe doing a little too much on a post-processing. But at the same time, this is kind of like how I saw it in my mind when I was there, if that makes sense. So it kind of works. But right now, today, I probably wouldn't I probably wouldn't edit these like this. I would try to keep it a little bit more true to life. Okay. 
As you can tell, I really like shooting through fences. If you've watched my videos, I've had a lot of things framed by fences and fences and barbed wire and stuff. Why can I not talk? But I just try to always have something in the foreground, as you can see in this picture right here. And that edit was actually a lot better on that one, different from the rest for some reason. But yeah, I just generally like to have something in the foreground. It makes photos a lot more interesting in my opinion. And I never really shoot my landscapes at like f22 or f16 or whatever like most people do. I like to shoot them at like f4 or 5.6 with something in the foreground and just blur it out because that's just what I do. And if you listen close, you can hear the start of Nostalgia Ultra right there. October 2018, this was my third trip to Big Sur. Not really a trip per se because it was when I was driving back from New York to California. I'm gonna do a video on that whole road trip later, but yeah, this was just the Big Sur stint of it. I was shooting a campaign for Armatron watches and I also had a friend with me who's never seen Big Sur, so I wanted to show her right quick. I finally got to see McWay Falls at sunset. You'll see the photo in a second, but I feel like I post-processed a little bit too much. Nowadays, I would do it a little bit different, but keep in mind it was like pretty dark out, so I had to work with what I had as far as the post-processing goes. But like I said, short trip, I only stopped here and I took like two photos and left basically. July 2019th, this was what, my fourth trip to Big Sur? I didn't really take any videos, but this is just proof that I was here. I existed, I am perceived, or whatever it is the, the flower children say these days. This was the next morning. I was actually heading back from, I slept in my car in Carmel, and then just headed back to LA after that real quick trip. Megway Falls in some okay light. And yeah. August 2020, another chapter in this saga. This time I was meeting up with my homie Adrian who came down here from Oregon for a birthday trip of his and I was, yeah, linking up with him. I was supposed to link up with him the night before but we ended up on opposite sides of the Nacimento Ferguson Road and if you don't know what that road is, look it up because there was no way I was driving at night. So in the morning, I actually drove all the way north and then back south to meet up with him here to circumvent the mountains or whatever. We both just flew our drones right here pretty early in the morning. I think it had to be like 6 or 7 around then at the Bixby Creek Bridge. And can someone tell Death Cab for Cutie it's really annoying that they named their song Bixby Canyon Bridge because I always get it confused now. Like, that's not what it's called. What are y'all doing? But yeah, I had some dope sunlight here, and that's about it. I'm gonna let this part rock because I don't wanna talk over everything. I can't peep Adrian's shirt because it's too far, but it says Dilla, Premier, Rizza, and Prince Paul. And you should know who all of those people are, especially Dilla. Flew the drone again by this tunnel. I have no idea what that tunnel is called, but it looks pretty dope, so I shot it. This is one of my favorite photographs, and I don't know why that rock in the water, but like. I just like it. Sue me. October 2020, another short impromptu trip to Big Sur. I had no real reason to go this time aside from the fact that, you know, of course, obviously just to take photographs, but 
Jay Electronica's Act 2 album, which I had been waiting for for like 10 plus years, leaked on Reddit, so of course I needed to drive to listen to that and the rest of his whole discography on repeat. And of course take some mediocre film shots. Actually that one was digital, but that's mediocre as well. I don't know what it is with me in this place right here, but I've shot it a million times. And also, I should mention that I accidentally shot this uh, this roll of film, Kodak Portrait 400, rated at 200. Because prior to this, I had some Kodak Gold 200 in it, and I forgot to change it. So everything's overexposed, so keep that in mind. McWay Falls once again. I don't know what this plant was. Is that cotton? Because if it's cotton, I feel really uh, odd about that being a black man. So after getting up at like 2 a.m. after barely sleeping and driving a million hours to get to Big Sur, I got pretty tired, so I took a nap in my car. These photographs right here are some more mediocre photos from before I took the nap. So here you go. That's me and my white tee right there, like D4L. Wait, sorry, that was them franchise boys. So after I flew my drone with the constant crippling fear of crashing it, I went back to Bixby Canyon Bridge, thanks Def Cat for Cutie, and just chilled out there for sunset. And there were there were people walking down there, and I've been trying for years to figure out how to get down there, and I just can't figure it out. And I looked online, and nobody else knows or will say either, so if you know, let me know. I know you heard that Jay Electronica playing. These photographs I actually like. Um, this was after I uh, switched my role and it wasn't overexposed anymore. So these were a bit better exposed. That photo I know is trash, but I like it. Whatever. December 2020. So this was my last trip to Big Sur thus far. It was with my good friend Shreya, she was going through some things at the time. I needed a trip as I always do, so I was like, what's good? We're packing up the car, we're going to Big Sur, you've never seen it. So yeah, we did that. Um, and I don't know how to phrase this without saying too much, but remember what I said my reasoning was for going to Big Sur the first time? Well, let's just say that it's fitting that this trip is with who it's with. So one thing that's been a major reoccurring theme for me lately has just been change and the passions of time and just how people change, places change, things change. Everything changes, nothing stays the same forever, but it's not necessarily a bad thing. I've had a lot of relationships change that I thought were supposed to be one way and ended up being a lot more beneficial another way. So like, where am I going with this? I'm not a philosopher, who knows? But basically, I think what I'm trying to say is that cliche, you can't see the forest for the trees. And sometimes you'll be going through something and you think it's like the fucking end of the world or whatever. But once you come out on that other side and you look back years later, one, you may not even remember what that turmoil was or whatever, blah, blah, blah. Um, and you'll be better for it. <laughs> That's not what I was going to say. That sounds corny as hell. But uh just things happen things change and it's supposed to like things are supposed to change and i'm really glad that i kind of never got the photos or whatever that i wanted from big sur because 
Maybe I wouldn't have gone back so many times And I wouldn't have seen how this like amazing place has changed over time These photos are from Montaña de Oro State Park Which is south of Big Sur So this is kind of cheating But I kind of lump it in with Big Sur because it's so close And this was just a really dope trip And I can't wait to go back to Big Sur To continue my toxic relationship with it And hopefully get some photos that I'm like super satisfied with But until then uh, I don't know. Until then.